I wanted to do a quick recap of uh, differences between, between how Moodle and Google Classroom are used at Buckhanger College. Um, so I thought it also better to show than tell, so I'm doing it as a video. The uh, Google Classroom is extensively used. It, it's used by almost all teachers across the school and all students um, are comfortable using it. Uh, some teachers use it for everything, for everything that they share with students. Some students use a mixture of Google Classroom uh, or Moodle as needed, I'm kind of showing the difference here. I use both. Um, this is a reasonably typical Google Classroom for me. Uh, it is, it's kind of a quick and dirty space. I needed to share a bunch of videos quick with the students that I knew I wasn't going to be using uh, very much afterwards. So I just slapped them up on here. Uh, but the other thing that I do is getting them to hand in work. Uh, which can work well so long as you are in control of it and understand that students can remove their work after or unsubmit their work. Uh, so if you have a deadline and you want to keep the students work, say if it's NCEA, then you would need to make a copy of the folder or download all of the student submissions. Um, the, to be honest, the main reason I use it is for um, templating uh, so I can give the students a copy of a Google document to work in and they each get a copy and um, I then can track exactly what they're doing as they're going along. So, so for example, uh, yeah, if I wanted to add an uh, assignment and I wanted to include a Google Drive document that I've created, like this one here for instance, and say make a copy for each student. That would be the most typical thing I, I do so that then I've got their work to look for. So yeah, Google Classroom, quick and dirty, good for that immediate communication between students and teachers. Um, if you want to, if you've got a lot of resources, Google Classroom can be a bit of a problem. We do have these topics now, of course, which is uh, an improvement, but it is still quite very much a newsfeed uh, format and it can be quite easy to get lost. So for instance, if you're teaching a, top, a standard that's going to be assessed externally and you want to go through stuff and then have resources available to students later in the year when they're doing revision, uh, Google Classroom can be not as good as Moodle in that respect. So that's the cue to hop into Moodle. Um, so you all Moodle courses are organized by faculty and by year level. Um, this is my little demonstration course. So if you if you ask me for a course, you'll get one that looks a lot like this without the camel. Uh, most likely the first thing you do is say, I don't need 10 sections because you end up with a lot of blank sections, which isn't a great look. So go into the administration menu and edit settings. And if you scroll down to course format, you can change the number of sections to whatever suits you. Uh, just while I'm here, I just just point out this whole Moodles thing. Uh, Moodles always going to give you a lot of options. Uh, this is a pretty typical kind of ugly Moodle option screen. Most of the time you just use the defaults and you don't really bother looking at any of this stuff and that applies all the way through Moodle. Just do the, do the easy thing. So here's um, what the students see at the moment there's not a lot on there so as a teacher you've got this turn editing on button and if you don't have that you need to let me know because it means I haven't given you the permissions um, and I can't give you the permissions unless you've logged on at least once to Moodle so yeah so turn editing on and magically I've got many options of things that I can do um, I can drag and drop files onto um, onto the various sections there you go so that's done a quick upload of quite a large file by the look of it um, I can drag and drop as many as I want there I can reorganize things and reorder them and so on I can even rename them in line um, the each of these sections obviously I can change the image by clicking the change image that's quite intuitive and I can change the name by clicking on this little edit summary cog down here and change this to perhaps dromedary not sure if that's how you spell dromedary it's close enough though um, 
So change the section, change the image, make it look a little bit more appealing to students and upload resources. So this works really well for content heavy uh, subjects, science subjects typically, others as well, uh, where you just need to have a whole bunch of stuff. What also works well for me is um, at the end of the year, ready for next year, you can just hide stuff from the students. You can still see it, they can't. And um, as the next year progresses you can unhide each section as you need and there's all the resources you used from the previous year and you can hide them individually and unhide them as you go along so it can be actually quite a significant time saver once you've set yourself up for one year for the next year you, you can have everything ready to rumble so google classroom versus moodle they're both good they both do diff slightly different things um, google classroom is going to be great for juniors always Moodle not so great for juniors typically um, it's up to you to decide which works best for you and um, make your choices oh one thing about Moodle of course is there are a whole bunch of other things that Moodle can do uh, it's not just drag and drop and resources on you can also add links and whole pages of information and in here there's all these activities um, that these are actually surprisingly powerful uh, they're not always incredibly intuitive to use but they're not that hard frankly uh, i love things like the glossary has worked really well for me in the past and the checklist is something i really enjoy using and um, you can do a choice although the Google question probably works better for that. Um, so there is stuff in there. Um, I have got some resources on Moodle. I've got a, a knowledge base of um, all different activities and things that you can do in Moodle. Uh, so if you're interested in that, touch base with me and I'll, I'll put you on track to, to do some reasonably powerful stuff. I recognize that most people probably don't. Um, there's a bit of a bang for buck thing there you have to put a bit of time in to get anything out of them but people who have used them have found them uh, enormously valuable there you go google classroom uh, and moodle complementary use whichever suits you